and fellow adventurers, welcome to the MinMaxed Podcast. We want to thank you for joining us and you do so as we continue the Extinction Curse. As always, we'd like to invite you to join our Discord, a place where you can hang out with us and other listeners of the show. And if you'd like to throw a little financial support our way, you can check out our Patreon. And a shout out to all of those at our big number level and above. Wolf, Rock Jedi, Blardimus Slump, Thunder Mammoth, Elisa Ellie, Das Chris, Dickie Lopez, Carnifex, Alex K, Mordine, Doma El Laca, Dr. Grinis, Forevermore, Frank L, Just Mike Works, Ross D, and Treehugger. And a big thank you to our new patrons this week. Matthew, who paid in pounds. We're fucking international. At the build-up level, Discord regular Indie Link. And at the big number level, Darren W. Thank you all so much for your support. And now a recap of Session 73. After a big crazy combat in a magical flyy room, we give chase to the Dara who fled. We catch up with her in a room at the top of Tall Stairs. It seems to be a lab and it's gross. Combat starts and she's already injured. She runs again and the wizard catches her. Turns out they know each other. Her name is Ginjana. She's wary of the wizard's lamp, calling him a lantern bearer, whatever that means. She says she didn't torture her victims and it's for science. Jeb and Peach Pie aren't having it, and after some conversation, they kill her. The wizard doesn't really seem to care. We find a prisoner lady chained up. We heal her and give her some food. She and Moonlight talk a bit, while the wizard and Peach Pie prepare to disarm a big fancy trap they found. While looking into it, a big bad boss Zolgath shows up. Her name is Theseka, and shit's about to go down. Things are nuts, I can't even. Suffice it to say, she kills the poor prisoner, and in the end, Theseka kills herself by blasting her own head off with her big magical crystal thingy. It's all pretty badass. With you guys all standing around, short of breath or whatever after that combat, you guys are hurt pretty bad. Not Moonlight. <laughs> you ran <laughs> the whole damn fight. It's called strategic retreat. Strategic retreat. It was good. It helped. That dumb bitch was chasing me all over the place and still couldn't get me. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Killed killed an NPC about it and everything, too. Yeah, that was unfortunate, but... Collateral damage. What do you guys want to do after the fight? Loot the body. Investigate the body. Sleep for a good day. Yeah. Peach Bride just, like, bends over and catches his breath. There are the goggles that she was wearing. Those are magical. She definitely has a set of alchemist tools on her. Couple of alchemical reagents and potions. And a ring whose magic outstrips the rest of them pretty well and good. Are you guys going to do any healing or do anything about uh, how down on HP everybody is? I mean, I'd certainly like to if we get the opportunity. But I can definitely tell you I'd be wanting to sit down for like an hour minimum. Wait! I haven't popped my reflection of life. I fucking popped my fucking reflection. God. (laughs) Why do I always forget about this thing? Okay. This is how I feel about myself. The only heals that are left are mine. Jeb, you're just casting the rest of your heals on yourself. That's it. Two of them. Damn. (laughs) I prepare like 10. Yeah. And they're all gone. I would like to be healed. Yeah, I mean, I guess I would sit down to start doing first aid if we get an opportunity to do so. I'll interrupt you. You're not going to get very far into treat wounds. I would say probably around five, six minutes after you begin Jebediah, you get an emotional sending from Turtle. The first one is an alarm emoji. (gasps) The second one is a question mark emoji. Fucking cats, they're so unreliable. (laughs) What is she trying to tell me? Moonlight, you hear in your head, something's coming, I don't like it. Jeb, you get spiders, 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 spiders. Fuck you. Exclamation marks, spiders, exclamation marks. Fucking spiders. I hate spiders. Why the fuck would there be spiders coming? Moonlight walks out and looks out the edge. I cast fly and I jump off. <laughs> I'll do the same thing. I <laughs> Wait, we all potions to fly, don't we? If you step out to the terrace, you're overlooking the woods, but you don't see any spiders. Do you remember where you left Turtle? 
Yeah, she's in the she's flying in the room. flying room. She's flying around. Our spider's flying in the spider room. She's a tressim now. Emojis of wings, spiders, wings. No, no. Oh God, flying spiders? No, there's no, there's no flying spiders. Gliders? No, no. Can you tell Turtle to leave? <laughs> yeah, as I'm saying. Yeah, I mean Turtle. If she sees spiders, dude, she's going home. Like, what size of spiders are we talking? Like little daddy long legs or like medium sized spiders? She can't really communicate that through the bond. You make up the decision of how big they are, because if they're any bigger than small, she's fucking going home. Uh, no, no, they would be small. I think the idea is that you have been getting lots of spider emojis. Lots of them. As in, there's probably swarms of smaller spiders. Fuck. Well, I guess. So you don't see anything when you look out the terrace. Turtle would walk out that secret door, maybe be loping out of it quickly, looking backward over her shoulder anxiously. She takes a sit down within view of Jebediah on the edge of the terrace and looks up at him. I do have four invisibility potions. Do we just want to go invisible and not deal with the spiders? They have spider sense, dude. I can't fucking get my spider. How high up are we here? Like 120 feet off the ground on the terrace. How long do your potions last? Oh, I do have two potions of... I have two potions of standard fly. We're good, then. Yeah, we're good, then. We we'll can just fly. just fly away. All right. I I have a fly. I give another fly to Moonlight, who can leshy glide. I don't feel like we are completing what we need to complete until we have the re- reflection. We need rest, man. We need to get somewhere to... Let's just fly up to the thing. Oh, that's right. We don't have the reflection yet. I'm casting fly and invisibility on myself. Now, hold on a second. The alert came from Turtle's connection to Jebediah, and then Soro telepathically to Moonlight. Who says what? Jeb, are you telling the group that there's spiders down by Turtle? Let's get the fuck out of here. No, I think Turtle's crazy. There's no fucking spiders here. There's Zolgas. Everybody's casting spells, so I want to make sure. Well, I mean, if I don't know, I don't know. I don't do anything. But I do still want to have done my fucking reflection. Well, yeah, I'll I'll let you get that off at the beginning of healing. Appreciate it. I wouldn't be out on the terrace if I don't know anything. Well, yeah, because Soro just says something's coming. Moonlight walks out on the terrace to see if they can see it. Well, while these guys are trying to heal up, I'll tell them that supposedly Turtle thinks there's spiders down in the flying room. What kind of spiders? I like spiders. Soro also mentioned that something was coming, but I don't see anything. I didn't trust that dagger as far as I could throw it. I mean, you could probably throw it pretty far. I feel, I, I'm very weak, Knight. Oh. Well, I suppose if you're speaking yourself, yes. Can I make a perception to try and hear anything that's coming? Yeah, absolutely. I get a 31 perception. You kind of stop, hold your hand to your ear. Nothing. You don't hear anything. Soro says to Moonlight, this time out loud, something's coming, we need to leave, we need to leave now. Well, if you don't like it, I think I'd rather like to meet them. I don't believe we're done here, Soro. In your head, Moonlight, Moonlight, I don't think you understand. We must go, we must go now. Yeah, I'm really hurt, so I'm going invisible. I cast invisibility on myself. What would have you so frightened, Sora? No response. But I will note, I am standing on the edge of this terrace, ready to jump off. Yeah, fucking leshy glide. Yep. I love that feat. Hilarious. Wizard, you went invisible. Yep. You are listening really hard, but you're also looking down both hallways, just kind of glancing back and forth and back and forth. To the hallway to your east... You see this shadow that's falling on the hallway from the end of the light that you can see from the outside. And the shadow travels along the wall. Now it's on both walls, on the floor and on the ceiling. You can't see beyond the shadow and it's getting closer to the room that you're in. When you look at the edges of the shadow, you see what look like tiny spiders running along the edges of the creeping shadow. Any type of uh, recall knowledge? I could make on this. You can give me a religion check. Can I take twice as long on it? Two actions, Two actions worth, I suppose, yeah. Okay. Fuck. I rolled a four and got a 24. You're pretty sure this is a spider swarm 
from the Shadow Realm. Soro says in Moonlight's head, Moonlight, we have to go now. If you don't go now, you will leave me no choice. Well, that sounds like a threat, bitch. Moonlight doesn't take kindly to threats. See if that fucking dagger has Leshy Glide. <laughs> Just throw it off the tear. Just set. chuck it. <laughs> There's nowhere to go, Soro. You know as well as I do that you can leap from this platform and be just fine. Now jump. We have not come to that yet. So be it. Everybody give me initiative. Yeet. Let's do this. Let's do it. I'm fucking excited for this shit. Anything that pisses off Soro is my friend. Right? Yeah, I'm so confused. Moonlight is really considering just jumping, but because if it's got Soro that scared, it's got to be yeah, something crazy. Yeah, but Soro isn't scared of evil shit. He's evil as fuck. Soro's scared of good shit. Soro's probably afraid of things that will take his souls from him. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, he'd really, he'd really hate a harbinger of Phrasma then. You have lived too long, Soro. Goodbye. At the top of initiative, the shadow continues to come down the hallway and it coalesces on the wall just opposite of the wizard Peach Pie and Jebediah and it's a mass of swarming spiders and out from the mass walks a woman she looks like this I break my invisibility hey (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> yeah i mean i don't know how else to describe it it's a fucking it's a fucking psychopomp and it's a spider psychopomp whatever those are called i've forgotten so the woman that steps out from from the mass on the wall is a medium-sized human she's wearing a mask and an outfit that seem to be made of spider silk She's holding an ebony black staff with voodoo-type effigies tied to the staff and around her belt. Cobwebs hang from every surface on her, and she's got wide, white, thick wings made of cobwebs. Yeah, yeah. Yep. And the spiders lessen as she steps out, as she seems to form from the mass of spiders. And that's her turn. It's Moonlight's turn. Moonlight, make a will save. Moonlight gets a 36 on the will save. Moonlight, you are stunned. As Soro commands you with the dominate person spell to leap from the tower. And if you choose to fight that command, you are stunned one fighting off that command. Oh, I'll fight that off. But that doesn't happen until my next turn. Right? No, he he goes he goes before you. Oh, okay. So I lose the first action of my turn? So you lose the first action of your turn. Do I know he tried to do that? On a success, yes. Okay. He commanded you to leap from the tower as she appeared. Sora, I have allowed you to come along on this ride so far. Do not try that again. Can I try to intimidate him? Go nuts. Oh. Uh, I mean, this is what I always use my hero point on. Is this just the stupidest shit? Do it. Or save it for a future will save. No, nope, that's worse. That one. one. Or get a one. No, oh, he's not going to believe me. What What the hell is that thing? Do I sense a soul from this thing? Yeah, without a doubt. Wizard Peach by Jebediah. It's your turn. You're not actively acting in turn. So what would you do being presented with this creature? Religion check. Try to talk to it. I'm asking Sora what the hell this thing is. Sora's going to tell you. I want to see what these guys get on there. Checks first. I don't know shit, bro. I critically failed? Did she do anything to my cat? Not at all. Turtle's still down there. Then me and her are good. Peach Pie gets a 25 on his recall knowledge. It's also a critical failure. Nope, just a regular failure. But you have no idea what this is. I mean, if the Wiz isn't making a check, can I try to talk to her? Absolutely. Hello. Uh, who are you? Hello. My name is difficult for mortals to say. Lelsh, You may call me Lelsh. 
I'll call you L. Fine. What can we help you with? You are harboring something. Something that I have been looking for. Can, can you tell us more about what you're looking for? I have a lot of shit on me. Like, much more than it looks like, to be honest. <laughs> I'll start pulling shit out of my sleeves. <laughs> It'd be difficult to overlook something like this. It's a dagger with a red gem at its hilt. I mean, like, has it turned and look straight calm. at Moonlight. <laughs> <laughs> All three of them <laughs> that fucking dagger. <laughs> when like, like you look down to your waist, Soro's not there. What do you do? Waddle away? <laughs> you can sense his spirit, but he is invisible. He made himself invisible. Yes, that's awesome. <laughs> what do you want with the dagger? It must be destroyed. For thousands of years, it's been stealing souls from the Lady of Graves. Not an offense that we take too kindly in the Boneyard. Now, if you please surrender the dagger, there won't have to be a fight about this. No, just, just hold on. <laughs> like, I'm like yelling just, like, across the way. You're still on the terrace, right? I'm yeah. still on the terrace. Like, <laughs> 50 feet away from you guys. Yeah, Moonlight is distinctively very far back. Soro is screaming in your head to jump, go, jump, please, for the love of all that is... Just jump. The dagger is the reason I'm here. It's not all bad, right? There have been dozens of souls that have gone missing from this area just in the last several months. You've been feeding it, haven't you? No... I only know of one soul. She kind of seethes for a moment. And it was really already a ghost, so that soul wasn't going to you anyways. No, it should have come to us. Now, what about these other souls? You mean other souls? An artifact of the power of which you wield is certainly responsible for dozens of missing souls in such a small area. You just happened to wield it and happened to be here. Actually, we had already been looking into some people mysteriously dying. Yeah, that was before we got here, wasn't it? I say from yes. behind. L here said it's been happening for months. We haven't been here all that long. She's had thousands of years. Well, I said months in this area. Months in this area. We've only been here for like a month. I think something else is stealing souls in this area. And that's the people that are dying, mysteriously. So you propose that there is something else responsible for the dozens? You're only aware of the one? Yes, and believe me, I was distinctly aware of the, the one. It is a dagger, it can't exactly do it itself. Tell me, Moonlight, does that make up for eons of this creature doing its work? Hand over the dagger, Moonlight, and there won't have to be a fight. It's just one dagger. What's a few souls over millennia? 10,468, to be precise. Like, I realize Moonlight made their check, but I feel like there's still just some part of Soro, like, guiding what they're saying. Soro is telling you about this creature in your head. It's her turn. She's going to take a couple of steps forward. No, no, let's not do anything hasty. Moonlight's a very good tree. I fail to see how that's possible, Peach Pie. A very neutral tree. Peach Pie steps directly between this creature and Moonlight. If you fail to see how that's possible, then I wonder why I should listen to you on what is right and wrong. Face doesn't betray any emotion at that, but she just kind of has a thin-lipped stare. You can't see her eyes because her mask gets in the way, but you can feel them. Peach pie, peach pie, peach pie. She wants to take out Soro. Just let her. Not if it means hurting Moonlight. If you are able to get the dagger from Moonlight without hurting them and bring it to me, that is an acceptable outcome to me. I am saying that was her turn. 
Soros up. He's invisible and he's hiding still, so he's not going to take any actions. Moonlight. I mean, I know what that thing is, and I really don't want to fight it. Yeah, I'm really torn. I'm trying to decipher what I want versus what Moonlight wants versus what Soro, what's going through Soro's head, or put it, Soro's putting in Moonlight's head. <laughs> This, this is layers, man. Fucking layers. There is. What's actually throwing me the most is the fact that I made it my leshy keepsake. If that wasn't the case, I think I would probably hand it over. But I feel like this is really tied to Moonlight now. Moonlight actually gets supernatural strength from Sora. Yes. Sora's partly a part of Moonlight. But Swanee doesn't want to force a fight against this creature for all of us. <laughs> I might die if you do that. We might all die if I do that. Yeah, it could be only Moonlight who survives. All I care about is myself. I might die if you do that. Okay. We have a we have to have a three week odyssey where Turtle just goes and finds another Hickburn to become <laughs> her companion. Time. Go find a level twelve Hickburn to hang out with <laughs> There's dozens of us. <laughs> There's probably quite a few. <laughs> How high up are we? Uh, about 180 feet. Jebediah tries to convince Moonlight that it's not worth it. I didn't save you so we could die through a psycho bump. Moonlight, I don't always understand good and evil very well. But I think you're good. And I think Soro is a corrupting force. I'm going to bow out of this and just go sit in the, against the wall. Is the wizard just uninterested in conversations about good versus evil? A hundred percent. He doesn't give a fuck about that. I almost feel like Moonlight at this point, like, delays because they don't know what to do, which would give okay. Peach Pie and Jeb a chance to say something. I think Moonlight is more interested in what Jeb was saying, like, about not saving them just to get killed by this thing. <laughs> I want Jeb to make a diplomacy check. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) On Moonlight? On Moonlight. Not great. 27. Yeah, that is is actually a failure against any of my saves. The Wiz will not even attempt to diplomatize with you with his minus one, but he will say good and evil does not matter. Just use what you want to do. (laughs) Living and dying is one thing. Is it worth your life? As he's sitting there smoking his pipe the wizard. Good and evil do matter. That's the journey that Peach Pie and I are on, philosophically. Personally, I tend to agree on philosophical matters that good and evil don't necessarily matter, but when something takes souls from the Lady of Graves, good or evil, I intervene. So Moonlight knows Sorrow's still there, right? Mm -hmm. Can he sense what Moonlight's thinking? You don't know the answer to that question. Moonlight's going to try to hand him over. What I would say is something like, Well, it's a part of me. It's not worth the life of these three. And I would try to pull it out and hold it up. Then at that, I want you to give me another will save. Yeah, and I already wasted my hero point. Unless you want to give me another one for good RP. I mean, you did great, but why don't you make this roll first? <laughs> 33. Yeah, I'll give you a hero point. That fails. Fuck. Well, let's see if I can critically fail. Yep, I can. Sure can. (laughs) Oh, Jesus. (laughs) Oh, my God. Two hero points, two natural ones. So how, how well does this go, Tyler? You go to grab Soro, and as soon as your hand closes around the hilt, your vision goes black. You black out. Peach Pie, Wizard, Jeb. You see Moonlight reach behind their back, stop, turns toward the open terrace, leaps, and glides down. Oh yeah, I already calculated it out. I can glide for 36 rounds from here and make it 900 feet. (laughs) Holy shit. (laughs) And Moonlight's going to do just that. Moonlight is now... Because I drop five feet for every 25 feet out I go. Moonlight is on the run, not able to control their actions. The Marigna hisses. Does this uh, chick have wings? She does. She's big spiderweb wings. 
she immediately takes off. Well, it ain't her turn. Chase sequence is what we're gonna do. Wizard, you see Moonlight take the leap and glide away. What do you do? Is Marigna already chased after? Or is Marigna right in front of me? No, it's not technically her turn. I'm hurt. <laughs> well, that silly tree jumped off the end. I start looking at the items that we just looted. <laughs> the Wiz doesn't fucking care. Moonlight can come back, Moonlight can run away. It is what it is. Alright. Peach Pie. One with each hand, Peach Pie grabs two potions of fly. He takes one with his second action, and with his third action, he runs and jumps off the edge and begins flying after Moonlight. Jebediah. Uh, Since I'm like right next to this chick, I'll just uh, tell her whatever she does, try not to tart Moonlight. I can't make any promises, Jebediah. How the fuck you know my name? <laughs> She's called everybody out by name. She didn't call the wizard by name. <laughs> Ooh. I was gonna say everybody. It, not the wizard. Didn't call the wizard out by name. That's a good point. Not even she knows the wizard's name. I'll go to the edge, and I'll just make a nod to Turtle. Because you said he, Turtle came out here, right? Yeah, yep. Turtle's out on the ground level right now. Turtle's gonna follow, like, right below Moonlight the whole time. I'm assuming your speed's not 60? No, for each action spent lushy gliding, I go down 5 feet and 25 feet through the air. So you move 75 feet per round. Right. Turtle will follow directly below Moonlight. And then for my other two turns, I'll drink a flat potion too, I guess? You got one too? Sweet. No, I mean not a potion, sorry, I'll just cast it. Oh, okay, got it. Then as the party minus wizard chases after moonlight so Elle's going to move forward and you're gonna see her almost sink into the floor like she's walking down steps but instead of sinking into the floor she's turning into the swarm of spiders that's actually going to climb down the edge of the terrace and she's got a ways to go before she can start making forward movement I mean, let's be honest. I've got invisibility. I'm gonna cast invisibility and disappear. <laughs> she has something for that, though. Yeah, Turtle can smell your ass, you dirty tree. <laughs> <laughs> All right, then I'll think you're a dirty tree. Sorry. Let's establish speeds real quick. Moonlight can move 75 feet per round. While in the air. While in the air. 90 on the ground. Peach pie, how fast can you move in the air? I'm definitely going to be doing some stupid shit here, just to let you know, so it's not going to be definite. Okay, well, but with my potion of fly, 40 feet for one minute. You just got your first fly action in? So I have moved 40 feet. 40 feet, Moonlight had moved 75, so you're getting pretty close. So after the Marigna, Moonlight would fly another 25 feet, and cast invisible. I'm just along for the ride at this point. <laughs> it's true. Then after Moonlight, Wizard still chilling, Peach Pie. Oh, and as everyone was leaving, he was just hey guys, see you later. Like We will meet up again soon. <laughs> right? I'm still part of the circus. <laughs> right? Right? <laughs> I was gonna say, he had like Am, am I? Right? We will find uh, a new group of friends. <laughs> Alright. Peach Pie, Moonlight went invisible in front of you. You know roughly where they are. <sighs> Action one. Peach Pie reaches up to his shoulder and pours a little bit of the other potion of fly into Bernard's mouth. Action two. Peach Pie flies another 40 feet. Action three. Peach Pie throws Bernard at where he thinks Moonlight is. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, I'm gonna make an attack. A Bernard Man. attack. You are now 20 feet away from Moonlight. Bernard has a thrown weapon I can imagine has a 10 foot range. Sounds about right. Yeah. He's not a flying squirrel. He's well, he is now. <laughs> not, not really. Now he is. His aerodynamic <laughs> capabilities have not been improved. <laughs> What's Bernard going to do? Uh, he's just going to try and grab onto Moonlight to start with. Just grab it onto Moonlight. Okay. 
I mean, minimum 50% mischance. I know. I know, bitch. So there's the mischance here. <laughs> can, wait, can I use my action point on that mischance? Absolutely, it's a d20. Okay. But you also have to You also have hit to hit somehow. Moonlight. Yeah. It is not hard to hit Moonlight. Unarmed attack? You'd be surprised. <laughs> I mean, yeah, let's go ahead. It, it, it would be a ranged... I think ranged is what makes it difficult here. Peach Pie is going to throw Bernard with... What's your proficiency with weapons? 15. I guess you're going to throw Bernard with expert proficiency. Of course I am. (laughs) What's an improvised weapon in 2E? Yeah. (laughs) Let's go ahead and get a roll. Let's see if even we need to have this conversation to start with. Uh, That'd be a 25 to hit. That would not hit. Action point. All right, first one. They're going to try that again. A minus two with improvised weapons. 36. Oh, I thought that was going to be a three. It was a 19. I believe a 36 hits, Moonlight. Even a 34. So, yeah, that would hit me. My AC is 29. We still got a mischance roll anyways, and he doesn't have a hero point here. You got to roll an 11 or higher. You want an 11 or higher? Is that, unless okay. you, want, you want to do something else? Oh, uh, no, that works with me. Here okay. we go. That's a 13. Moonlight's got a flying squirrel. Yeah, Moonlight's got a flying squirrel. He's perfectly at home in the branches. He's a squirrel. <laughs> Bernard tangles in. What does Bernard do? Holds on for dear life. I'm coming to help you, Moonlight. I know you're under Soros' evil grasp. Until Soros stabs Bernard with his <laughs> brain. Himself. Does Bernard have a soul? Have we established that? We have to establish that Bernard has a soul. Does have a soul, yes. Oh, okay. I would feel really bad if I stole Bernard's soul. <laughs> oh, that'd be the worst. Jebediah, it's your turn. Jeb just, like, will move, like, the 30 feet that he can. The two turns, but Turtle will continue. Wait, so I can see Bernard now, right? <laughs> yeah, on Moonlight. <laughs> All right, I'll just follow Bernard. <laughs> <laughs> Moonlight's 100 feet out from the tower. Peach Pie is 20 feet away. From that, so Peach Pie is 80 feet out. And if Jeb can fly 90 feet, he is 10 feet away from Bernard. That's true. <laughs> and by proxy, Moonlight. <laughs> yes. It's the Marigna's turn. The Marigna still has to climb the remaining length of the tower. So now she's at the base of the tower. Moonlight will, with their first action, glide. So continue to glide 25 feet forward, so 125 feet. And use their second and third action. Bring it on, Soro, you evil dagger! I shall defeat you! To cast a fifth level sound burst. Oh, yeah, no spells left. Right on. No, I do have one fifth level spell. Jebediah and Peach Pie. Alright. That's gonna break your invisibility there, Soro doesn't matter. He's got the rainbow swirl on him right now anyways. <laughs> okay, so fort saves from Jeb and Peach Pie. Yeesh. I rolled shit. I got a 24. So 39 is a success. 24 is a failure. Jeb will take 14 sonic damage. Peach Pie takes 28. I thought about picking up noise poppers for the possibility of there being party damage to party member tonight, but I forgot. <laughs> is, that, is that your whole goal? No, no, not, not really. It was just something I came up with right now because it made me sound like an asshole and that sounded on brand. Peach Pie. Peach Pie's deafened. Peach Pie can't, can't hear anything, but it's your turn. Okay. Uh, well, that was loud and annoying, but, you know, not something I haven't seen before, so I at least understand it. Action one, I fly 40 feet and don't quite catch up with Moonlight. Action two, I fly another... However far, I have 15 more feet to catch up with Moonlight. You're 45 feet away, so... You're five feet away with one movement. Oh, only five feet away? Okay, I move five feet up with my flying to catch up with Moonlight. Action three, I give Bernard two actions, and Bernard searches around for Soro. Bernard would make a seek action, which is a single action. That would be just a perception check from Bernard. Let's get that. 29. He finds Soro. Uh, action two, he attempts to grab it. Then yeah, yeah, we'll need a will save from Bernard. You got it. Bernard does get a hero point, by the way. He gets a 25, which I assume fails. That does fail. 
All right, he gets it. He'll use his hero point. He's trying to do something very heroic for the first time. I've said this before. Bernard gets hero points. Turtle gets hero points. I also said I'm never going to use Bernard in combat, and here we are. And here we are. He gets a nat 20. Yes. <laughs> Bernard expending a hero point. Soro has this contingency on him to attack something that tries to bodily remove him from its current owner. And that's a difficult save. It is a success with a 38, and the 20 puts it to a critical success. Bernard is now holding Soro. What? <laughs> Bernard is holding Soro <laughs> with like like two squirrel hands with its reaction drop Soro. <laughs> yep. Reaction drop Soro. Soro falls. He falls the distance 150 feet to the forest floor. And he turns end over end, and audibly, he screams. <laughs> he spins end over end and lands point first into the forest floor, buries down to the hilt. Whatever, he's not cool enough for that. He just lands and flops. <laughs> tang, clang, clang. <laughs> Jeb. It's your turn. I attempt a... I'll move 10 feet. I'll fly 10 more feet and attempt to grapple on Moonlight. Not no. great. 24. It's not going to do it. It's not going to do it. Moonlight's body does go limp when Sorrow's thrown. Oh, really? So on Moonlight's turn, Moonlight's going to start falling. Unless Leshy Leaf Glide calls something else. You have to actually use that action. You actually have to use it. If you don't use it in a turn, you fall like normal. Okay. Then yeah. Moonlight's body goes limp, and you'll see that they will start falling. So I'm just grabbing something out of the air? Trying to grab Moonlight out of the air. And I would code still against their save? Yeah, that's one of those weird things that's like, technically, yes. <laughs> like, you're not, yeah, you're not fighting it by any means. You're just catching somebody who's falling. Jeb misses. It's the Marigna's turn, finally at the bottom of the tower. Moves 90 feet along the ground toward where Soro went. And where are we at? 125 feet? Currently, yes. So she's one round away from Soro. Moonlight, you begin to fall. Moonlight falls and hits the ground. Uh, as you're falling, Bernard is just hauling on you for all he's worth, trying to fly back up the other direction and just just can't do it. Every inch of the way, he's trying to pull you back up. So I, cause I just go like unconscious or basically? Yeah, you go unconscious because of the the rip that occurred when Bernard threw. And it's not just because of the spell, it's because of the attach of the actual connection that's been growing between the two of you. I have an important question. Bernard is not going to let go of Moonlight, trying to haul them up with his fly speed. Bernard will take fall damage. Okay. Bernard dead. Do you know how much HP Bernard has? I do. You'd only be a hundred and like fifty five feet down. Oh yeah, I suppose. So you're going to take half of 155, so you're going to take... 78. 77, I guess, if you round down. So Moonlight's going to take 78 points of falling damage. You always round down. Moonlight takes 77 points of falling damage. As does Bernard. You're welcome. Bernard also takes 77 points of falling damage. I hope Bernard had 78 HP and I just saved him. Can you imagine dropping 150 feet and not dying? <laughs> You're a tree. <laughs> Train a squirrel. They'll be fine. 150 Squirrels are actually very good at falling. What's hilarious is like, you know, if you fall more than 1,500 feet, just treat it as if it was 1,500 feet. It's like, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> when is this going to be an issue? All right. So Bernard also takes 77 damage. Moonlight, how are you doing? I'm unconscious on the ground. I mean, I'm not unconscious because of hit points. I'm unconscious because whatever the fuck Sora did to me. Correct. I have still 41 hit points. Peach Pie or David, how is Bernard doing? Bernard is dying one. Peach Pie, it's your turn. Peach Pie flies down 40 feet per action as quick as he can to reach Moon Knight. I think uh, that means... If you fly straight down, I think it's double. Yep. Oh, nice. I fly straight down and pull up right at the last moment 
and land next to moonlight and quickly kneel down to examine my two friends. I think that's the end of my turn. But also, you probably need a dying save from Bernard. Yes, Bernard's. Bernard's dying check. Does he have colorful rainbow blood? <laughs> that's, that's... He does. He does. I get a three. It fail. Bernard's dying value increases to dying two. Jebediah, it's your turn. I'll just fly back down as well, and that's pretty much all of it, right? Or do I have one action? So he would move 60, so it would take all three to get to the ground. And where's this, uh, Morg? Hey, where's, where's Morigna the, uh, in all this? Yeah, where's this chick? Well, the Morigna, as, uh, you two, Peach Pie and Jebediah, land, the spider swarm that is the Morigna approaches and forms just five feet away from the hilt of Soros dagger, and the gem that's on that hilt begins flashing almost in a panicked way. And she pulls a sheath out of her pack, and the sheath looks like it's a pale bone of some kind. It must be the tusk of some great beast. And she prepares to put Soro in the sheath. Peach Pie, it's your turn. Peach Pie, checking both Moonlight and Bernard and seeing that both are injured, will cast Battle Medicine with two actions, one on each. Okay, which one goes first? Um, Moonlight. Okay, Moonlight. I succeed. Moonlight. Critically succeed. Critically succeed, true. Moonlight heals. 17. Bernard, again critically succeed. Heals. 13. That was very brave of you, though. I can tell that was pretty stupid, too. <laughs> In fact, Bernard, I think you're a hero. You're a hero, Bernard. Uh, uh, thank you, Pishpa. <laughs> <laughs> Phenomenal. I loved it. Jeb, it's your turn. I wait for Turtle to catch up. And then I pick up Moonlight and put him on turtle. The Marigna, L. One of L's wings stabs the ground just in front of Soro and then kind of pries the dirt up so that Soro falls out of that position, being stuck all the way down. And without touching the hilt at all, she guides the opening end of the sheath to Soro and slides it in. And as soon as the hilt meets the top of the sheath. Moonlight, you wake up to the tune of 66 mental damage. You take 21 points of mental damage as you feel Soro's influence and essence being torn from you. You also lose your charm benefit. Where is he? What'd you do? Give him back. It's done. And she waves her hands and the item disappears. Now, about this story you were telling about not being responsible for the dozens of souls missing in this area, tell me all that you know. I don't mean to be rude, but two of my best friends just almost died. Perhaps we could have a fucking minute. She stands up a little straighter. Fine. I will return to your wizard friend. She turns her back to you and starts striding back toward the tower. I chat her up when she gets back. <laughs> oh, hey. Uh, yeah, as soon as she pops up. <laughs> uh, hey. Just gonna give her like, a look and a wink. <laughs> as I'm playing with my spell slime. <laughs> as I'm still just like bleeding on the ground. I'm so fucking hurt, man. I still have less HP than everybody here. Like, the Moonlight just fell 150 feet, took mental damage. I'm still lower than Moonlight is. I mean, it's pretty damn close, but yes, you are. Jeb, Moonlight, Peach Pie, Bernard, all lying in the forest floor out in the Eman Wood. You'll feel better after time, Moonlight, I'm sure of it. 
Moonlight activates their reflection of life as they reflect on their life. <laughs> <laughs> Appropriate. Very good. And we'll lay there for at least the minute, if not more, just kind of staring up into the sky. So for asthma, huh? So four, <laughs> four of our adventurers are lying on the, the forest floor recovering. The Maregna comes back up. She looks at you with your oh hey, and you can feel her cock and eyebrow. Again, you can't see her eyes, but you can feel it through her mask. What do you know about the missing souls? I don't know. What do I know? That's what I'm asking. What do you know? Well, if you don't know, how do I know? I'm trying to find out by asking you. 34? I know quite a bit. (laughs) Does she have an accent? Like, do I think she speaks a different language? You know that Maregna's really... They have constant tongues. They can speak any language. God, that's so fucking sexy. (laughs) <laughs> I want tongs. Oh, did you get the dagger? Yes, I did. And she spreads her hands apart, and you see Soro's hilt inside of this, like, giant tusk. That little guy's got quite the history. We, had, we and him had a nice long chat once. She makes it disappear again. Yes, we had thought that it had gone missing. There was some time where it was very inactive. Something drudged him up recently. Found out a lot about you by proxy. Yeah, what do you know about me? The ex-members of the menagerie have quite a bit to say about, well, all of you. From praises of being heroes to being scum. Tell me stories about myself. (laughs) I don't know how to react to that. (laughs) <laughs> it's probably the first time I'm ever going to hear him. Probably. I said that you act with utmost indifference. Yeah, tracks. Nearly lighting your circus grounds on fire while attempting to clear it out, to releasing a greater bar cast upon a crowd of innocent peoples. Innocent? That sounds like us. Are they coming back, do you know? Or... Like... Is it just me and you now? You're giving us a little alone time? She looks over her shoulder. Oh, I suppose I should have said something. Moonlight and Barnard fell a great distance, the forest floor. They okay? I believe Peach Pie and Jebediah are tending their wounds. Okay. Okay. Do you know anything about tending wounds? I'm, I'm like, hold up my arms. I'm really fucking <laughs> hurt. I got this healer's tools. They're expanded, but I can't figure out for the life of me how to use them. She looks at you holding up the tools, and she just goes, stop, stop. No. no. She casts a couple of spells on you. Oh, shit. She has six level heal. She has six level heal that she's going to drop on you. Huh. Cool. 79 health back to you. Fuck yes. Thank you. Oh, I pop right up. Thank you so much. That was quite kind of you. I suppose having you in a bloody heap on the floor doesn't help me discover what's been stealing the souls from this region. Now, hold on one second. I start prestidigitating myself. Look presentable for... I gotta be bloody and dirty. I just gotta turn quick and wipe myself down. Turn back around. Okay. Continue on. (laughs) There have been souls that have been going missing, and if Moonlight is correct, and this thing is only responsible for one of them, then something has been doing work in this area. Have you noticed anything strange? Uh, we, we thought it might be the work of like a night hig or something. She reacts visibly to you saying night hag. What makes you think it's a night hag? Uh, we, we heard some rumors that, or from one of our guards that he saw a blue elephant leg coming out of a the portal or terror in reality in this whatever <laughs> fuck I don't know it was right after a man had his soul torn from his body the Fleer boy the fuck's the Fleer boy Tanessa Fleer is the name of the band oh, that he yeah, reincarnated yeah, yeah. that was the brother's name the kid that you picked up on the road I heard about him how the hell would she know about that yeah, it was him 
You could ask her. I mean, we reincarnated somebody, and knowing about death and shit is kind of their business. Well, speaking of that boy, is, is he down, you know, with you guys? No. His soul? He's not. That is one of our missings. You know anything about a night hag in this area? Now I do. What kind of reward are we going to get if we find this night hag for you? Reward? Can you get the souls back from the night hag, or is it like night, the night hag devour them? Depends. Night hags have a tendency to sell souls on the market of the outer planes. How much does soul go for these days? I will not entertain this conversation. Okay. What kind of reward are we gonna get? It's just not a for you. I pry no deeper on that. <laughs> She's like asking a cop how much an ounce of weed costs. <laughs> yeah, I <laughs> so hypothetically. <laughs> The guy was looking for an eight ball of cocaine. How much did you pay for it? Anyways, Peach by Jebediah Moonlight, you're just kind of sitting there recovering. Do you have... Are you going to be going back to the tower? I mean, we still need... Yeah, we, I mean, once we're ready, we're going to go back. Give it like an hour, maybe. We still got to go pick up that fucking reflection. You're leaving me with her for an hour? It's a lot of uh, silence in between you identifying items, I would imagine. I, feel, I, I would... 100% be proud of identifying shit to him, be like, show it off to her, and be like, hey, look at this. <laughs> My spell book has never been so bare. Yeah, mine's in rough shape. <laughs> oh, I <really>? have <laughs> a level one shockwave, a level two sea surge, and a level three slow. That's it. Yeah, I've got four level ones and three level threes. That's it. So, with Moonlight on Turtle's back, Jeb and Peach by, head back to the tower. During that time, the wizard's been identifying items. Peach by Jeb and Moonlight would be back about halfway through the identification process. Once you guys get into the uh, the room where the wizard's identifying them, the psychopomp you see is standing in the corner, kind of half draped in the shadows, just watching the wizard identify items. Elle stands up straighter from the corner and looks at Peach Pie as he walks in. When Moonlight walks in, she leans back further into the corner again and is just watching Moonlight very carefully. Moonlight's riding Turtle's back, staring at the ceiling, at nothingness. <laughs> Did we find anything interesting, we said? You guys want to do these real quick to see the items? Which ones are still unidentified to you, Ted? Uh, magical goggles. Magical goggles. Let's take that as your first roll. What'd you get? 39. That's enough. These are greater alchemist goggles. Going to peach pie. Yeah, I'll take those for sure. Level 11 goggles. 41 on the armor. Plus two resilient leather armor. Plus two. I haven't seen plus two shit before. Plus two resilient. Raspo, and I got a 26. This is a plus two striking heavy crossbow. Plus two striking. Uh, 31 for the last item. This is a ring of stone shifting. This item is a one minute activation. You can use it three times per day. And if you're standing on at least five feet of earthen material, like stone or soil or clay or what have you, the effect is when you activate it is you sink into the ground and emerge at another location within 100 miles. Oh my gosh. That location must also have an earthen surface of at least five feet deep, and you must be able to identify the location precisely by both its position relative to your starting location and its appearance or other identifying features. You can't carry extra dimensional spaces with you to the destination. And if you attempt to do so, the activation fails. It sure sounds cool. I think that'd be good for like a frontline person, just like just all of a sudden be next to somebody. Well, it's, it's a, it's a one-minute activation. Oh, a one-minute activation? So it's for traveling. Yeah, teleporting and that sort of thing. Mm-hmm. Uh-oh. I thought for you to pop back and forth from the circus when we're out on adventures. Yeah, Moonlight will take it. I look over at the Psycho Bomb. So, is that it then? What do you mean, is that it? There's something in the region that is taking souls. Your wizard friend and I have been talking. 
He thinks it's a night hag. Ah, uh, yes, we have been discovering seemingly the work of a night hag. If this is the case, you must tell me all that you know. Like everything we know? What? No, no, not everything you know. Don't take that literally. You just said to tell you everything we know. Everything you know about the night hag. I walk up to her, and I pull out a handkerchief, and I say, Here, everything I know is on this. And I hand it to her. And she reaches out and pulls. More handkerchiefs come. She cocks an eyebrow. She looks really closely at the first square of the handkerchief. You have to keep going. Is this the tail end of a handkerchief manuscript of some kind? And she starts pulling. And just it pulling. keeps coming. There's 50 feet of it. And she's just like looking. Every every square have handkerchief. Hold up, there's 50 <laughs> feet of it? I have a 50 foot silk rope that I've specifically described as being handkerchiefs tied together. Yes. <laughs> Where do you keep it? <laughs> I don't know. In his sleep. In my sleep. Peach Pie is actually right really sleep. skinny. It's just his whole clothes is stuffed with handkerchiefs. <laughs> Well, she's doesn't crack a smile. Her facial expression doesn't change. She pulls handkerchief after handkerchief and checks each one. She looks at you once, like, at 20 handkerchiefs in, and she's like, I see you have much space to continue making notes, and she's just pulling and pulling and pulling. It's a joke. I'm sorry? Never mind. And then I'll tell her what I know about the night hag. <laughs> as, as I stuff the handkerchiefs back in my sleep. <laughs> tell her about fucking Tanner and Tanessa and what the bearded man saw that night Tanner died and all the other things we've run into that seem to be the work of a night hag. Night hags do have the ability to occupy the space above a victim in the ethereal plane and plague them with nightmares. Tanner died in the evening. It was night. Are there any other deaths that you've come across that have taken place in the evening? Mysterious deaths? Uh, I don't remember if any of the Opera Vandy ones were, but I could tell her about all the weird shit going on with him and the deaths that are surrounding him. They were all overnight. He had dreams of them. That's right. Yes, they were all overnight. He had dreams of them. That's right. Good call. Tell me all you can of this opportunity. Gladly. He's a morticerary. Necromancer. <laughs> Do you actually say necromancer, wizard? No. No, okay, I didn't think so. <laughs> it could be that she is using these dreams to haunt and plague opportunity with guilt and attempt to drive him towards chaos and evil. And then once she's done her work in the Swordlands... He's the prize. What are you going to do about it? See the supper Vandy. He's rather a nervous fellow. You're probably going to scare him. That could be for the best. It would probably be funny. Would you like to come and help? There'll be less of a chance of her escaping with the bottled souls that she has captured. I will help you under one condition. I want you to sincerely apologize to my friend Moonlight for what you had to do. I don't understand. Sincerely apologize for something that I sincerely feel like they should get over very quickly because the origins of this dagger are vile? You are not doing well so far. I don't need your assistance. I can do this on my own. On your means. She walks past Peach Pie and walks out the front door to the terrace, turns into a swarm of spiders, and climbs down the side of the tower. Well, she'll be dead next time we see her, I foresee. So, are we gonna deal with this night hagger? Fuck it. Yeah, what are, you, what are you guys thinking? What are you guys feeling? Oh, we still have to, fi we still have to finish this tower. Oh, yeah. 
We gotta go get our resume. Yeah, give us our yo. fucking reflection. Let's talk about a night hag. Fuck the night hag. They're like level eight or nine creature. Like, no. Let's just do this. <laughs> Does Moonlight want to be carried up there, or are you just gonna stay where you're at? I suppose. I'm sorry you're having a bad day. And with a 40, I climb up the outside of the tower with Moonlight. <laughs> Easily done. Almost as though it's reaching toward you. Using its essence, it bestows upon you the resonant reflection of... Uh, the reflection of light. Your eyes are imbued with an inner light that is not visible externally, but that provides you with dark vision and the ability to distinguish color in darkness. You can also focus this inner light to manifest as a brilliant beam of energy from your eyes. Once per day, you can cast Searing Light as an innate divine spell, heightened to your caster level. What is the other two? What's the, the light? What's the fourth one? Well, there's a light, stone, water, and life. So I think at this point, we just want to stay here at the tower, rest here, get healed up, and figure out what we want to do in the morning. Well, then if that's the case, if nobody has anything they're going to do through the night, uh, we're going to have the morning come. There was no issue, no encounters, no nothing throughout the night, and you're all able to get the rest that you need. Moonlight, your drained condition does not reduce by one. Yeah, go fuck yourself, Tyler. <laughs> what do you all do in the morning? I think Bernard would still have misgivings about just letting the psychopomp go and not offering to help. So I think in the morning, Bernard would try and convince Peach Pie one more time to help out. Peach Pie, do, do you really think it's a good idea just letting the strange boneyard angel go like that? I mean, clearly this night hack is causing problems and killing innocent people. We should really do something about it. I suppose. What do the rest of you think? She's obviously much stronger than we are. What does she need us for? That is a very good point. Maybe we let her weaken it and die. <laughs> and then we step in. <laughs> what does Bernard think of that? I mean... While an effective strategy for our own sake, it certainly isn't very good for the Boneyard Angel. Won't well, you just go back to Phrasma anyways? I would certainly think so. And this is Moonlight saying it with a plus four religion, so... <laughs> <laughs> Moonlight has no fucking clue what happens. Why would the <clears throat> Psychopomp die? What did I miss? If, like, the Night Hag kills the Psychopomp? The Night Hag's not gonna kill a Psychopomp. I wouldn't think so. I would love to beat the shit out of... If we can kill it really easily, that'd be nice. I'm still traumatized from getting hit with the lizards. I mean, wasn't tail. it going back to Opera, <laughs> to talk to Opera Vandy or something? So how far away is that? That's all the way back at Carrick. It's a long ways away. Where's the circus right now? Just outside Turpin Row. That's like a few days travel, isn't it? It's this ring you can't take anybody with you, right? It's just you. Somebody use the ring. Boop on over to... Let it be me. Let, me. let me pop it off from Andy's place. I'm going to go into his bed. You're into his bed. I will tell you, you do have to end up on dirt or ground or stone. So you wouldn't be able to do a second floor of his house, but... Let him know that a crazy spider lady is coming to talk to him. Everything's going to be okay. We're on our way. And by the way, we told her you're a necromancer. <laughs> it's like, what, 15, 20 miles away? Carrick's like 32 and a half miles away. I mean, we figured this. It was, we move, what, like 20 miles a day or something like that? Something like that, like, yeah. Just normal travel. All right, guys, we've got my, we're, we're not fucking walking there. We'd get some horses. Phantom Steed! A horse has a 40-foot movement speed. Yep, riding horse. So it'd get us there in one day. But we'd have to go somewhere to get a horse first, which Fuck would just slow, slow us down. I'll prepare four phantom steeds. Perfect. 
This phantom steed is a riding horse, or just a riding horse, forty feet uh, can hold its rider's body weight plus twenty bulk. It has AC and all that bullshit. Perfect. It is decided. Maybe we use the Earth Ring to go tell the circus that we're heading back to uh, Carrick. I was going to ask you what your plan was with that. Moonlight, would you want to do that? I mean, Moonlight's wearing the ring. But you you see Moonlight in the morning, and they do not look good. <laughs> Peach Pie would cautiously approach and say, Moonlight, how are you? I did sleep well. Perhaps would you like to use the earth travel ring thing the wizard figured out? Maybe go tell the circus that we're going to Carrick and then you can just boop on over to Carrick and not have to walk all that way. And we'll meet you there shortly. I would likely just ride on Turtle anyways, so... I think I'll just go with you guys. Fair enough. If Peach Pie knew that the thing that Moonlight needed was like a new bonded item, he would absolutely offer you one of the stuffed animals in his wagon, but he doesn't know that. (laughs) (laughs) Moonlight doesn't even know that that's what's happening. Then uh, Phantom steed it up, Blizzard. Let's roll on out. trying so hard to make these wayward circus performers be heroes. But hey, we got there eventually, right? We're on our way. But what will we find once we get there? Find out next time as we continue The Extinction Curse. And until then, may you have many great adventures of your own. It's your turn.